Good morning, everyone. Uh, hi, I see lots of messages coming. Uh, it's day two of our conference. And uh, we just wanted to remind you what's happening and uh, to forecast. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, so, um, please participate in the chat box and please ask questions if you have any questions. Uh, you can uh, ask questions using ask a question feature, which is on the bottom of the screen. Uh, we would also like to hear from you on Twitter. Please use our hashtag and please follow us. Um, we also have our Slack, um, which is growing. Uh, so please join our Slack if you haven't already done so. And uh, you can also um, chat with our participants in the channel Conf20 General. Uh, last but not least, we also had sessions taxi time yesterday. Uh, I hope people managed to uh, join it and enjoyed it, managed to join it and also enjoyed it. Um, so uh, if you go to Hexi time, uh, we also have now NHSR workspace in there and uh, you can have NHSR community badge. Uh, if you want to know more about Hexi time, just go to the website and um, you can also watch session later. And we also have some, we also have some strict rules about um, being a very supportive environment, so please uh, be kind to each other and polite. Uh, otherwise, we can ban you. Um, and just a quick overview of how to use uh, Crowdcast once again. I'm sure people already found the chat box because I can see uh, messages are coming. Um, so it's in the bottom right corner. Um, also, uh, you can ask questions, as I said, and you can also vote on questions once the question was asked. And uh, uh, if you want to move from session to session, you will be automatically pulled um, uh, in the um, uh, when session is live. But also, you can use drop down menu. And you possibly already noticed that if you use drop down menu and go to sessions which 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 are passed, you can rewatch it. Um, I guess if you have time during your lunch break and you and you missed sessions yesterday, you can uh, rewatch them using Crowdcast. And also, I can see Mohammed just said about Echo. Um, yes, so it's quite easy to start opening a few tabs in Crowdcast. You, you might forget to close one before, and then you close new one. Um, so please uh, make sure you have only one tab open, uh, because otherwise uh, you'll hear echoing. And uh, this, this is everything from me. Uh, over to you, Mohammed. now. You can hear me all right. Yes, OK, thank you. So it's a great pleasure, really, for me to introduce our next speaker. Uh, our next speaker is Ellen, Ellen from the uh, uh, Health Foundation. Ellen is the Programme Manager, and Ellen has a background in primary care data analytics and worked for a large uh, GP federation, uh, a lot of experience also in mental health. So Ellen's been with Health Foundation, I think, for about two and a half years now, uh, or Oh, one, yeah, okay, a little less. Um, but more importantly, Aaron, uh, Ellen carries in her purse something like three million pounds every now and then, and she gives it out in December. So so be be good to Ellen, please, and December's just around the corner. Anyways, over to Ellen, please, thank you. <laughs> so I think I should be sharing my screen yes, we can, now. Yes, we can hear you and we can see your screen. Thanks, Ellen. Excellent. That's a good start. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you so much to NHSR for having me um, and inviting me to speak on better analytics. I'm so thrilled that the conference is back for another year and, um, and yeah, really pleased to be kicking off the second day of talks. Um, my name is Ellen and I work at the Health Foundation managing a program that seeks to advance the use of data analytics in health and care across the UK. Um, so for those of you that aren't familiar with the work that the Health Foundation does, um, we are an independent charity that works to improve the health and care of everyone in the United Kingdom. Uh, the data analytics team that I work within, um, we contribute to this in a number of ways, whether that's funding teams um, you know, across the system to test innovative analyses and develop new tools, or whether that's supporting models of collaboration like the NHSR community, or promoting investment in analytics from the very top. Um, and of course, um, my talented colleagues in the in-house team also perform in-house analyses using patient data. And so I've actually been in this post a year and a half now, and um, I think the role of analysis in that short time has just kind of transformed. You know, we've seen this really wonderful building of momentum behind the use of open source software 
we've seen as, as recently as earlier last month, questions around tools and skills for NHS analysts come to the forefront of public attention. Um, the continued investment and interest in data-driven technologies like artificial intelligence um, and you know those, the calls for those technologies to actively address health inequalities rather than further entrench them. I, I really feel like we're just beginning to scratch the surface of what's possible um, uh, and what could be possible if better analytics were invested in and um, effectively adopted across the entire health and care system. So what do we think that better data analytics looks like? Well, uh, I think good the good use of data analytics in the health and care system has enormous scope. I've distilled it down here to three key elements. Um, so uh, data, of course, we need good quality data, um, which means good coding practices and good understanding of the, that data's uh, limitations and its appropriate usage. Um, we need that data in a timely enough manner so that it can be used to inform care, that it can be used to inform operational decisions, strategy. Um, the data should be able to drive insight um, and it should reflect the lived experience of those people that need care, the people that are accessing care, patients. Um, so that's kind of that sums up exactly what we think that the role that data should be playing. But all of that excellent data is fairly unusable if we don't have the right tools and infrastructure with which and within which to apply it. Um, at a very basic level, we need tools that meet the needs of those collecting the data and those analyzing the data, and preferably tools that can effectively lift and shift and perform analyses so that valuable analyst time can be freed up. Um, of course, I'm preaching to the choir here when I extol the virtues of open source software. Um, and really, when I, when I talk about infrastructure, I'm not speaking just about the value of appropriate data warehousing, but also of the value of organizations and systems um, whose infrastructure and culture really uh, allows for openness and a meaningful discussion and dialogue between analysts and decision makers, which brings me to people. We could have every perfectly linked data set and dozens of shiny, sexy tools at our fingertips, but without people, we won't really get very far. Um, <clears throat> and I, of course, analysts are important, but I don't just mean analysts here. I mean, clinicians, managers, decision makers, leaders, we all need to understand how data analytics plays um, a role in our job. And we need to be able to engage in that kind of meaningful dialogue that ensures that decisions are driven by insight. So those in a very small nutshell are the three key elements of good data analytics in the health and care system. So. How then does the Health Foundation support the system to use better analytics? Uh, well, three main things. We invest in analysts, we invest in analytics, and we advance the role of analysis. Um, when I think of analysts, obviously, um, I think of grapes. Uh, you cannot grow a single analyst. To develop analysts that contribute to a high performing organization or a system that is um, effectively meeting the needs of its patients, you have to grow a bunch. We have been investing in and building networks to bring together analysts and their colleagues. Um, you'll be aware, of course, of our work supporting the NHSR community, but we also fund the Welsh Modelling Collaboration um, and we provide support to AFA. Um, you know, particularly AFA's role in supporting individual analysts and providing opportunities um, to learn and network is so vital, um, particularly their work in supporting analysts to become professionally registered. Um, I'd urge you to join AFA if you're not already a member, you know, check them out. Um, they've been doing some really fantastic work and it's a very exciting time and much is afoot. So check them out. Um, a network that you may not be 
familiar with um, is launching this month. We have pulled together um, a community of practice for social care analytics. It's being led by Future Care Capital, uh, and we're looking forward to convening all sorts of people. So um, analysts, social care providers, social care commissioners, um, researchers, patient groups, uh, groups representing carers, membership organisations representing uh, those that work in social care analytics or social care. Um, essentially, anyone with an interest in social care analytics is welcome to join. Um, and we would like them to design um, a vision for the future and what just good social care analytics looks like and how do we get there. Um, we'd love to have you. Uh, so let me know if you'd like to be involved. I'll touch on in a moment a little bit more about the work that we're doing in social care as well. Um, of course, we also invest in analytics um, and analytics have been hailed as the new oil, but um, I'm a millennial, so I've always believed that data analytics are the new avocados. Um, I want data analytics to be on every single board agenda in the same way as they've crept onto every single brunch menu in the last 10 years. Um, I want everyone, particularly decision makers and board members, to be willing to pay good money for data analytics and be willing to invest in it uh, and recognize its value. To date, we've invested over 3 million into our Advancing Applied Analytics program. This seeks to improve data analytics within social care settings. Um, and we're also looking, sorry, we're also looking towards the end of this year um, to fund five separate projects that it seek to improve data analytics in social care. The Advancing Applied Analytics projects, of which there are now 43, um, they are looking to test different innovative ways um, to use data analytics in the health and care system. Um, and we've been doing a little bit of work on understanding the legacy of those projects and We've been um, we've been finding some fantastic stories about how our investment has in turn improved the investment um, that those organizations have then uh, put into their analytics projects. Um, and it feels as if there's been some really fantastic sustained improvement. Um, we'll be publishing a guide um, or a series of guides next year that will describe the case um, for better understanding of and better investment in key analytics functions. Um, these guides, they're essentially explaining an analytics concept to both the decision maker, so why is this important? How should you use this to better your organization? What questions should you be asking your analyst team? Um, and then also to describe that concept to the analyst, so where can you get training on this? Who's doing this well? Um, here are five things to check before you finish your analysis. Um, we're also, we have also championed this year um, healthcare analytics across the system by teaming up with the RSS, uh, the Royal Statistical Society, to award the inaugural Florence Nightingale Award for Excellence in Healthcare Data Analytics. Um, we'll be opening up this award again for applications in January. Please keep your ears to the ground for an announcement and start thinking about how, um, you know, or who rather you'd like to put forward to be recognised. We all know that there has been some stellar work that's been done this year by healthcare analysts. Um, so we'd like to, you know, urge you to, um, to nominate your colleagues, nominate yourself, um, and celebrate your success. Um, and really, by investing in analytics, by recognizing excellence and demonstrating the value of high quality analysis, we're really hoping to promote that investment. Finally, we work to advance the role of analysis. Uh, so the way in which data continues to evolve and adapt to the changing needs of the healthcare system is fantastic. Um, data analytics are versatile, and we should really be bold in exploring how we can harness its power in different ways. Uh, 
in this way, and bear with me while I labor this metaphor. Um, I think data analysis mirrors the humble brain. I'm sure at times we all feel as if we are grinding away at the millstone, um, but it's only with imagination, and innovation that we can continue to reinvent the role of data analysis and how it can be effectively employed um, to improve everyone's health and care. Uh, this pandemic has starkly laid out how health inequalities are, you know, they remain rife uh, in our country and um, they pose a devastating threat to many of our communities. Uh, this year in the data analytics team, we have focused on um, exactly how we can ensure that data analytics te technology, data-driven technologies should be used to identify and actively address these health inequalities rather than further entrench them. Uh, so much work is being done across the system for these um, you know, novel applications of analytics um, and we're really proud to support um, and promote them. And um, I've included here some examples of activities across the year that we've been really proud to be a part of. I'll be publishing these slides um, with links to every tool that I mention here. But suffice it to say, it's been a very busy year for everyone. Um, we've seen our award holders uh, gain national attention for their work on COVID-19. Uh, we heard Lord Taylor uh, bemoan the lack of analysts in the NHS during a debate in the House of Lords um, and name checking our report, Untapped Potential. Um, we contributed to publications on everything from Florence Nightingale and how to bring NHS data analysis into the 21st century. We've highlighted the tragic impact of the pandemic on those accessing social care um, and their loved ones, as well as tragically those that also work in the social care sector. And we convened actors, um, you know, the key actors in that space um, to help us develop, you know, a direction and a plan to develop a funding programme that would fund projects to address those challenges. Um, there is more yet to come. Uh, before the clock strikes into the new year so do look out for the social care community of practice um, that we'll be launching and let me know if you uh, would like to be involved um, but I think that's probably too much on how we've been supporting better analytics and I'd like to kind of turn my attention to all of you um, what can everyone that's listening be doing to support better analytics um, I think there really are three levels that we can look at here. The first is level um, A, investing in analysts that work in support of the service. Uh, there are several ways in which the role of analysis can be recognised and developed, and there are some good existing programmes, um, but coverage can be patchy, and we know that analysts still feel undervalued and not invested in enough. We often hear strong from central bodies on uh, the benefits of new tech, but investment in skilled analysts and skilled analysis must be on par with the investment in technologies. Um, I think that we need clearer statements about the importance of analytical capability. And, um, you know, we need, you know, better support and clearer support for organisations that work on analytical career development. Um, next up develop a strategy for developing analytical capability. Given the importance of good quality analytics for supporting quality and efficiency, uh, as well as innovation, a comprehensive strategy for building analytical capability is like necessary. Um, and placing a much stronger emphasis on translational analytics is really important. Uh, academic institutes particularly have um, invested significantly in data science. Um, this investment really should be complemented by approaches that bridge that gap between academic research and real life practice. Um, that's sort of what our Advancing Applied Analytics project is about. We're looking at how in real life situations can we use innovative analysis and apply innovative analysis uh, to improve um, the health and care of different patients. Um, so funding bodies should be 
providing incentives for the implementation and spread of new analytical methods. Um, I think that at another level, we should be seeing um, those individuals and organizations setting expectations for what is appropriate analysis for supporting key decisions. Um, many existing national initiatives aim to improve the quality and efficiency of healthcare service and they often place demands on local analytics teams to provide data or conduct analysis you know as we've seen this year so i think arms length bodies have an opportunity to improve the quality of analytics by raising the expectation of what data analysis is appropriate um, it's important to allow for flexibility uh, so that local analytics teams can work properly with clinical teams and managers to understand the problem and apply appropriate analytical methods. Um, we also think that at the national level, we should be seeing them providing opportunity for analytical teams to share learning. And we have actually seen a lot of this this year. Prior to the pandemic, the analytical community was fairly fragmented, I think, with limited opportunities for teams to share learning. Um, and we really saw the value of being able to stronger sense of community, particularly in those Thursday huddles led by NHSEI um, and during the Afro Coffee mornings. Um, so national bodies, I think, should be continuing to develop these infrastructures as part of a national programme. Um, and initiatives should also, of course, complement those analytical community develops for itself, for ourselves. Uh, finally, for my list of um, wishes from uh, national level organisations, um, supporting, uh, supporting programmes aimed at clarifying skills, competencies and career frameworks. I think of this of all hills is the one I will die on. Um, several groups are already looking uh, to develop more consistent frameworks to describe analytical competencies, um, AFA, the Northwest Skills Development Network, Health Education England and so on. Um, this work can really help to, um, you know, improve recruitment, retention, morale and career development for analysts. And I hope that um, when, uh, you know, we're next year, the year after, we can, um, we're, we'll be talking about a much more concrete um, and well-defined career pathway for analysts in the health and care system. So, local system leaders, uh, local organisations, what can you do? Um, recognize that data analytics are a key element of local strategies. You know, whether these strategies are, they, whether they concern information, service transformation, or workforce and organizational development, uh, the use of analytics is going to be central. So we need to make sure that that capability is embedded and inbuilt into those strategies. Um, and recognizing the, lead, the need for local and capability when implementing new information tools like predictive analytical tools to understand, you know, potential future demand implications of organizational care delivery, for example. Uh, it's really important that our local leaders support training and networking initiatives. So in particular, um, you know, look for training programs that uh, work with teams across organizations. Uh, Health Foundation, we have some examples of these in our Advancing Applied Analytics uh, Awards. Uh, we also recommend learning approaches common solutions to shared problems like, you know, validated, locally configurable capacity demand and, you know, patient flow models, for example. Um, these obviously need to build on well-established methodologies, um, but excellent examples of this during the response to the first wave of the pandemic. Um, and, you know, it's really important to recognize that training and, you know, networking initiatives they're not just about keeping up with the latest coding or software tools. It's about individual development of soft skills too. So next up, um, exploring what skills and talent already exist in your organization. Audit your own team, audit your own organization. Uh, there's definitely a need for more general tools that help organizations um, understand their capability and uh, that kind of informs local plans that they can draw up, um, you know, and not just in your own organization, but within your system. Um, trust boards need to develop themselves to be digitally ready to competently digest good quality analytical insights um, and ultimately make good decisions. Um, next up, private sector. 
Um, when negotiating partnerships with the private sector, it's important to look for opportunities to develop internal skills and capability. We work with the private sector and, um, you know, when we do that, what we should be looking for is if, you know, why can't we maybe uh, facilitate skills transfer from the private sector into the NHS so that the NHS can build analytical capability in a sustainable way? Um, it would be really great to have some good um, examples of that, you know, in the next year or so. Um, so next up, supporting and developing people working across analytical and senior roles. If you are a local system leader, why stop there? Appoint a chief analytical officer. We have at last count three in the country at the moment. So Mark Farr, Kate Teemer and Sarah Dugan. They work across health, local authority and the third sector. And when I give this talk next year, it would be fantastic. I would love to be able to rattle off a few more names. Um, and so finally, as a local system leader, what you could do is work across organizational boundaries to make the most of your shared skills and resources. Again, I think we've seen fantastic examples of this this year, um, but let's get it into kind of regular practice. Um, this would include um, investing in the use of linked data to give an overarching view of wider population health delivery um, outcomes, measures of health inequality or equity in access to care, as well as patient experience. Um, the NDL, the Networked Data Lab that we run at the Health Foundation that my colleagues run, fantastic examples of um, uh, several different local systems that are working together uh, to link data and um, innovate. Uh, and so finally, what, what can we do, uh, us bunches of grapes? Um, we could be exploiting opportunities for networking, sharing learning, collaborating. I mean, we obviously, we're doing that all now that's why we're all here of course the open source platform lends itself really well to this um invest in your own personal development as well whether that's offered by national bodies or whether that's delivered by analytical networks and organizations um AFA membership is tiered for affordability so it will set you back 39 pounds or 49 pounds um, and not only will you benefit from the opportunities that uh, they can provide to you that you'll be supporting your colleagues um, across the country as well. And that's lovely. Um, build teams with a range of analytical skills and find ways to link these in with key problems. So give analysts the opportunity to visit you know, problem areas to get a better understanding of the different analytical techniques that are required. Um, help them integrate into wider teams and help them share the concept um, of analysts, analytics sorry, with their clinical colleagues. Um, develop better ways to select the right analytical approach for a given problem. Um, I think this is really where analytical networks can really come into their own and add real value. Um, you know, enabling analysts to seek peer support, hexi time, um, access expert opinion, um, and draw from the experience of others in their community, but in relative safety, you know. Uh, and finally, recognize the importance of communicating effectively and engaging with senior managers and clinicians about the value of better analysis. There needs to be an acknowledgement, I think, by analysts that the supporting narrative, what sits around your analysis, is an integral part of its delivery. It's not just the numbers. There's so much more to your analytics um, than, you know, raw data and, and numbers and data points. Um, so. Now that I've set out what I think good analytics are and uh, how we could um, work together to uh, support better analytics across the UK um, as the Health Foundation and as all of you, um, I just want to finish by asking you a question. How are you contributing to the future of better analytics? Uh, I have no doubt that you know there we have some of the best minds attending this conference. Um, and if you are out there growing grapes, selling avocados or grinding grain, uh, then I'd love to hear from you. Um, that's my Twitter handle, or you can get in touch with my team at applied.analytics at health.org.uk. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed my tenuous <laughs> green grocer metaphors, and perhaps I've piqued your interest in our work, or maybe I've given you some food for thought about how better analytics can look in your organization, but um, yeah, thank you for listening.
I hope that you enjoy the rest of the conference. Ellen, thank you very much indeed. Can I just check you can hear me all right? Yeah, I can yeah, hear you. That's great. Thank you. Uh, Ellen, lots of food for thoughts. They're beautiful analogies. And uh, and I think uh, perhaps I, I, you know, you're, uh, I, if I can just kind of kind of state something very obvious to 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 the audience, really, is that um, while says there are lots of funders out there who fund um, uh, healthcare related research, um, actually, uh, the Health Foundation is is unique in in this particular funding stream, in that they've they've identified the need to support analytics, really. And so it is a credit really to, to a funder to think uh, outside the box in this way and to, to, to support the analytics uh, community. Uh, Ellen, uh, we have had a few questions, but most of them are, are, were really to do with links to the website and things. So we've managed to, to do that. But I wanted to ask you, are you, um, we, we, because we discussed with you the possibility of a partnership with Hexitime and, and you did approve it, perhaps you would share a little bit of kind of your mindset about about why you felt that that was a good good thing to uh, for you guys to give us the nod for really please yeah well i think with the idea of hexi time in that sort of peer-to-peer -peer support um i think is fantastic uh being able to give people that opportunity to network in a much more structured way i think is just fantastic quite often you know we i've, I've seen lots of people do different polls where it's kind of like, would you be a mentor or would you be interested in being mentored? And quite often the answer is yes, but being able to actually um, plug into an infrastructure that just allows you to say, you know what, I'm good at this and I can give you an hour and um, that sort of structure just really easily facilitates the sort of good work that we want to be seeing um, happen across the system. Really. Yes, and I think that point about about grapes and so on, it's, 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 a, it's a way to kind of, help us grow more grapes I think really. Um, there you go, let's get a vineyard. <laughs> let's get a vineyard, that's right, thank you. Um, great, so any any other questions for uh, Ellen please? Either put, pop the, uh, on, on Crowdcast you can't uh, audio but you can uh, put something in the chat so feel free to do that. Um, and if we're, uh, we're coming to a close then um, um, Ellen, I just highlight a couple of things to you. So, you, of course, you are aware that the strategy unit is now the host for um, uh, for NSSR, and the strategy unit, uh, in part of its other portfolio work, is is developing a thing around what's called a, a network of decision support units, which really brings analytics to the heart of decision making. Um, I, I'm oh, I'm lead for the training program, and um, one of our our, our, our training programs is going to be leadership development for analysts. So, so um, I think that might be really quite interesting to some of the things you've you've spoken to. It will be our first baby steps in this, uh, but we will kind of kind of feed back to you a, a, a little bit so that you, you can have a, 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 a bit more to say about about what we're trying to do with, as you pointed out, not just the technical skills, but actually the the kind of softer, perhaps perhaps subtly more crucial skills. Yeah, I think leadership is really important. And uh, I did allude to it there about saying that we want to see some more chief analytical officers. It's, but it's not immediately clear as to how you get there or, you know, there's not there's not a job description swimming around somewhere. So I think that, um, yet yeah, uh, that leadership um, focus is going to be super important. So I'd love to be. And uh, we have had a question from Sarah Corkin. I will take a, a minute up for this, please. Um, uh, she's obviously said it's a great talk and just wondering what your thoughts are on, on how you think analysts might work better with, with academia. So I think it's something um, that we do a lot of in the Advancing Applied Analytics um, projects. Um, but obviously when we go out to... Um, when we go out to application, we're kind of asking those projects to kind of seek those uh, links themselves. And so I think there definitely is a space for someone to um, to join up, you know, uh, willing academic partners with uh, NHS organisations, but not just NHS organisations, of course, uh, social care, local authority. Um, and I think that my predecessor, Martin Bardley, who I'm sure you've all read his, um, his work, he was really uh, he was a huge proponent of matching up the pointy heads on both ends of the spectrum. So we want the pointy heads from academia and the pointy heads from um, the NHS and the health and care system. And so 
um, yeah, I, I'm not exactly sure how that looks, but it's something that we would love to kind of create and develop something on. Okay, that's great, Ellen. Look, thank you, thank you, everybody. This has been great, Ellen. Thank you so much. I'm just putting it, uh, Andy. If you can hear me, uh, you need to go into the. Uh, the next session, which is your session, I think. So, uh, every, uh, as people we know, if you go to the top left-hand corner of the screen, uh, you can just uh, scroll down to the causal inference uh, section. And oh, I think Mohammed disappeared. So yes, as Mohammed said, uh, thank you for thank you for Ellen once again to presenting, and thank you for everyone to attend the session. Uh, next session will start short, uh, shortly. Yes, and you can go to your session because you're a speaker. Uh, so you can go to session using the drop down menu on the top left corner, but also when the session starts, you will be automatically pulled into this. So thank you once again. And uh, Ellen, we hope you enjoyed this experience and we hope, uh, we hope you will be able to join us for some future conferences and future events. Um, everyone.